Hey guys, welcome back. And if you're new here, welcome for the first time. I am Jim. Today I'm in Luminar Neo. And one of the things that I'm talking about here is one of my favorite subjects, and that is color. Specifically, I'm talking about two different tools in Luminar Neo that I use fairly frequently to adjust colors. This would be either color correction or a creative color shift. The two tools in question in today's video are toning and color balance. We're going to jump into that right now. I've got this image here and I've got a duplicate copy of it right here. Both raw files, both slightly adjusted in develop so that they match, right? It's the exact same photo, just an exact copy with the exact same edits uh, in develop. On this first one, I'm going to jump into toning and show you how I approach that. Talk about some of the similarities and differences between toning and color balance. And then in the second image, I will do uh, the same thing, but with uh, the color balance tool. So I've got one edit, which is develop, and I'm going to start here in toning. Now, toning is one of my favorite tools. I love it. I use it all the time, and it's great for color correction and some slight creative color shifts. I actually think color balance is better for broader, more wide ranging and more drastic color shifts. They can both be used for color correction and color enhancement. But when I know I'm doing some massive color shifts, I tend to go to color balance instead of toning. I tend to use toning for slight gentle correction and enhancement. Like in this case, I've got a sunset. So what I want to do is basically come over here and take a color in the highlights and adjust that and then do the same thing in shadows. That's one of the key differences is toning has shadows and highlights. You pick a color, which is in the hue slider, which you can turn on by dragging saturation. You can pick whatever hue you want, and then saturation is the amount. Whereas in color balance, you're actually dealing with the existing colors in the image that are effectively represented by a color wheel. I'll show you that in a minute. And then you're balancing colors between those in three different tonal areas. It actually has shadows, midtones, and highlights. So there's one of the major differences. Now, in this case, I want some warmer tones in this uh, uh, in the highlight area. So I'm going to go ahead and drag saturation to the mid 50s, let's say something like that. Okay, 60. And then the hue, you can see it defaults to the red, but this is how this slider works. You basically just come and pick whatever color you want and you drag it until it kind of soothes, uh, you know, satisfies your color need there. In this case, I'm going to go something about like that. And then saturation is just amount. You can pick more or less of it. In this case, I'm going to go a little bit more. So let's call it about a 70. And I'm at a hue of 276, kind of on the edge of the blues getting into the pinks because I'm kind of enhancing the feel of sunset here. So there it is before and there it is now. It's definitely a color shift, but it's a slight kind of mild one and not really over the top. Now what I might would do is come in here with shadows and do something where I want to maybe cool off some of the shadows. So that's for me usually around a 230 and the saturation. I will just drag that until I get a look that I want. And I think something about like that looks good. Um, I definitely recommend uh, just moving the sliders around and experimenting. And one way to see how it impacts your image is actually just go to 100 and you can see, okay, that's where the blue is showing up. And so it's pretty much all over the image. So maybe you want it something about like that and then just ratchet back the saturation until you decide what, uh, what looks good to you. So I think maybe something about like that. Let me show you the before. There it is unedited and there it is after. The other thing you can do is adjust balance or amount. Amount is the total intensity. It's basically opacity, for lack of a better word. It defaults to 50, but as you increase the opacity, that's gonna amplify the effect that you've done in all areas of the photo. So at 100, it looks like that. I think 50 is usually where I leave it. And then you've also got balance. Now balance is basically the balance between what you've done in the shadows and what you've done in the highlights. The, uh, the way this one operates is if you go balance to the left, if you think about a histogram, on the left are the shadows in the histogram. So if I go to the left, I'm getting more of what I chose in the shadows, which is more blue. Whereas if I go to the right, I'm getting more of what I did in the highlights, which is more of those warmer tones. Remember, on the right side of the histogram is the highlights. So balance to the right is going to be more towards the highlights. Um, again, this is something to play with. Maybe you like that, but you want a little bit more warmth in the highlights. Maybe you just drag a little bit more like that, and you're thinking, oh, I want a little bit more pop, but I don't want to saturate it. Well, maybe you drag the amount slightly to the right as well. 
and you can get something like that. So here we go, before and after. Very powerful tool. I use it a lot on sunsets to slightly enhance the look of the color in the sunset and get that mood kind of sorted and looking the way I want it to look. Toning is perfect for that, absolutely adore it. But now I wanna jump into color balance. Okay, here's my photo that uh, we just adjusted with toning and now I'm gonna get into this photo, in which case I want to use color balance, as I've said. So I'm gonna come down here to color harmony and I'm gonna open color balance. Now, the first major difference that you'll notice is there's three tonal areas, shadows, midtones, and highlights. Also, there's no saturation slider, there's no balance slider, there's no amount slider. Effectively, what you're doing in each of these three tonal areas, shadows, midtones, and highlights, is balancing the existing colors and tones that are there. Let me show you a color wheel. I love this kind of thing. I use this in other videos, but if you know, red and cyan are opposite, so they're complementary colors. Green and magenta, same thing. Blue and yellow, opposite, also complementary colors. You will see that's the same thing as is represented down here in color balance. So what you're doing here is you're not necessarily picking a color and dragging a saturation or amount. What you're doing is within each of these tonal areas, let's start with shadows, you're basically picking these uh, color tones and moving either more towards one or further away from one. So in the red cyan tones, you can pick to either go more red or more cyan. Because we're in shadows, I don't wanna go red, I'm gonna go a little bit bluer, and you can kind of see what happens there. The further you get, the more of it, you know, the further you go towards one direction, the more of that color is gonna show up. So it's kind of like an amount or a saturation, but not exactly. In this case, I might go with some of these blues in these shadows and go a little bit like that. It's gonna darken because it's creating more blue, which is a richer, darker color. You're gonna have more of that in those darker areas. So you can see before and after. All I did is I went to 25 and blue in the shadows. I've done nothing else. And honestly, fairly significant difference in the photo. But you've also got mid-tones. So in a photo like this, you've got a fair amount of mid-tones. Maybe I wanna do a little bit warmer mid-tones, slightly more magenta, slightly more cyan. Now, if I do a lot, Again, an easy way to see how it impacts your photo is just drag it really far to the right. But in this case, I'm gonna go just a little bit on the red, so something like that. Now remember, red and cyan are opposite. So in the mid-tones of the image, I'm getting away from cyan and more to red. So lots of mid-tones in an image, therefore lots of places for red to show up. But of course, I've also got highlights, another one of the key differences here. All three tonal areas versus split toning is splitting the tones between uh, highlights and shadows. But for this one on highlights, I definitely wanna bring up some of those red warm tones and you can see what that's doing. It's giving a nice warm glow to those brighter highlight areas in the photo. And if I wanna give it a little bit of a magenta feel as well, which I like to do on my sunsets, I can come up with something like that pretty quickly without doing very much work. That's a couple of seconds of experimentation if I wasn't sitting here talking. There it is without color balance, and there it is with. Now let's go look at these two. I like them both. I don't know how different they are. I've got a little bit more of a blue overall feel on the split toning one and a little bit of a warm feel overall here in the color balance one. You can get to very similar, if not the same results on each tool uh, or on either tool, you can end up with results that look very similar, but you can also end up with results that are vastly different. Let me show you that. Okay, here's a city shot from London. All I did is I went into develop and I brightened it a bunch, all right? It was just way too dark. But this is a situation where I would use color balance and not toning. Toning, absolutely great. I love it for sunsets and some city scenes, but not a lot. For city scenes, I tend to use more of the color balance because I tend to want a little bit more creative color shifts in my city shots Whereas like landscapes, sunsets, things like that, I would probably use more toning because I'm looking for gentle enhancement and increase of some of those colors in those sunset tones. So in toning, uh, you know, you might come in here and in highlights, like the highlights are pretty bright. I don't really wanna do anything warm in highlights. That just looks terrible. Um, and so I might would come over here. I don't want green in the highlights. The blue looks okay. I mean, it calms down some of those colors, but it's not really helping me very much in this foreground. So I don't really like that. Let's try the shadows. 
Let's come over here and increase the saturation so I can kind of get a good idea of what's happening. And the closest thing that I like is going to be here in the blues. Not bad overall. I mean, I like it. It definitely looks better than, let me go back to Tony. Here we go. Let's go into the edits tab. It looks better than it did there color wise, but it still needs some work. I would use some other tools. I'd probably go get color balance uh, to enhance this, or maybe just use color balance instead of it, which is actually what I'm going to do. So let me get rid of toning and my develop edits are still there. Let me go into color balance and here highlights. I think I'm going to cool everything off. I just feel like it's just way too much. And so what I want to do is get away from those warmer tones. You can see it's making things fairly bright. You know, highlights didn't really do much for me. Let's go try mid tones and try the same thing. Too, too warm overall, too bright. That's looking a bit more the way I want it to look calmer colors because it's those red things uh phone booths are just bright and they pop and i'm going to be careful that i don't want to overdo too much color in the rest of the image and then i'm going to go into shadows and remember as i go more towards the blue it's going to create a darker richer overall look in those shadows which i think is nicely enhancing this photo so something like that look like that beforehand really bright which i did brighten and develop but really green and kind of washed out overall now richer better color balance because I feel like I have more control for these creative color shifts in color balance than I do in color harmony. So for me, it comes down to which type of photo do I have and how either extreme or how, uh, how massive, you know, how, how different in a color shift do I need to make. If it's a subtle enhancement, I think toning is quick and easy and requires less experimentation. It's basically highlights and shadows, pick a color, pick an amount, check it out. Whereas with color balance, if you have more to do, I think it's a better tool. And I think if you're willing to take the time and experiment a little bit more, you generally have more control over that end result. So I hope that gives you some idea of how I kind of approach color harmony and toning, what the similarities are, what the differences are, and the types of photos I might use either one on in my own workflow. That's it for this one, my friends. Thanks for swinging by, hanging out, all that kind of stuff. If this kind of stuff is interesting to you, how about a thumbs up? Let YouTube know that you like this video. Subscribe if you haven't. I'll be back really soon with more videos, my friends, because I'm here every week, and I just love doing it, to be honest. Thanks for coming by, hanging out. Love interacting with you. You guys take care of yourselves. I'll see you in the next video, and until then, adios.